And now he's running for the same, the same character. He's been admonished by the House of Representatives. In the old days, you were admonished by my ethics committee. I was chairman. That was the end of your career. No, yeah. I had to try a senator once, Herman, a baron of the Senate, uh, Herman Tal Talmadge. That, that was the end of his career. Another senator, we never got to trial, but just the fact of the investigation. That doesn't seem to happen anymore. Now you can get investigated and admonished and then, and, 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 and then go on to run for president. <laughs> uh, times changed. Now, uh, J Japan has also been a very strong interest of yours. Yeah, we gradually sort of shifted to China and then I created the Huame uh, Capital Company 50-50, uh, half Chinese, half U.S. That's undergoing reorganization right now. Basically, the business is cross-border intermediation, cross-border M&A, and we're talking about uh, private, uh, you know, doing private equity. Uh, China's rise has been phenomenal. When I first went there, I was a, you know, running dog of capitalism. Uh, but people wouldn't talk to us. Now they're all over us. Everybody wants to do business. Uh, uh, it's and they're very rational. They, 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 they uh, but still, it's a challenge for Americans. So uh, I've tried to bring Americans and Asians together in various uh, various ways and context, uh, partly for business, but partly also for public. For reasons, I think it's important to bring countries together and, and try to uh, create, you know, understanding and cooperative efforts uh, instead of, uh, um, you know, instead of always treating the other as a pure adversary and a, a zero plus sort of game. One and one can equal three and four if you, but not many. Americans have the patience for it, and, and frankly, uh, you know, our our career is part of the problem. Uh, the Chinese and other Asians are primarily ethical; uh, they rely on trust. We rely we, we assume distrust, and we rely mm -hmm. on contract, and that means the lawyers and the, right. the boilerplate gets thicker every year. Then <laughs> you've got to take that to the Chinese. I've seen Chinese just. Tell me where to sign. It's not going to be enforceable anyway. <laughs> so I try to bridge those gaps. It's, that's been a great challenge and in some ways frustrating, in some ways rewarding. Well, I know you're one of the few Americans who could say that you, you met Deng Xiaoping. I met him twice. Uh, in 75, uh, that was when the first congressional delegation went there. And then uh, uh, he came to Washington on that famous trip in 1979, and I was, Chuck Percy, Senator Percy and I were his escorts one afternoon. Uh, we took him on a tour, which included the obligatory uh, wreath laying at the tomb of uh, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, uh, he was not very communicative, but I uh, have kept, you know, a photograph of myself with Deng Xiaoping. And whenever I have a chance, I didn't bring it today, but <laughs> I pull that out, and that impresses the Chinese. Uh, been there for a long time, seen the most extraordinary changes, not just the, the physical changes and the evidence of economic activity, but the attitudinal uh, uh, changes. Very friendly, very open. Love America. They all want to come here to get it. Kids do want to get come here to get educated, uh, and many of them do. Our universities are loaded with them. Uh, yeah, I wish I saw as many Americans over there learning right. about the world. Well, what's the if I might? I know this is oral history, but uh, what do you think is the future of our relationship with China? It's up to us. Uh, one Sinologist says they'll only be our enemies if that's what we want. They don't wage uh, uh, preventive wars. They pursue a Westphalian doctrine of 
non-interference, maybe sometimes to extent. They spend maybe a seventh as much on the military as we do. They invest. They send their their doctors and their engineers abroad along with their capital. They've got problems. Got inflation at the moment. The safety net is not uh, uh, is not complete compute. Uh, the, uh, the environmental uh, problems and growing congestion are serious. Food costs are going to go up. But they are so systematic, so rational, so step by step. Um, they address these uh, uh, problems. And if there's corruption, which there is, I don't see it at higher levels. I think it's the universal type you find at lower, lower levels, which over there may typically involve you know, getting the right to use land from local units of, uh, of, of government. Uh, and you know, you see the world sort of gravitating towards China and towards its system. And all of the data, uh, poll data, look at the dollar, indicate the decline of authority, of security uh, in the United States as it continues to be seen at least as uh, spreading violence along with uh, financial uh, instabilities. Now the dollar is losing its status as a reserve uh, currency, could be heading towards monetary anarchy. The Chinese aren't quite ready, you know, to step up to the plate and take over where the U.S. was after World War II. Uh, we're going through a, a difficult time, I think. That's why I've written the Black Book, to try to remind members and people of the values that created this country, and they're more important now than then. Well, on the subject of the Black Book, uh, let, let, me, let me ask you uh, about some of your famous political antecedents in, in the Stevenson family. Uh, Jesse Fall. Jesse Fall uh, is, in the Black Book, the exemplary citizen. Every American uh, uh, was a citizen. Uh, his duty to his, he served his, his country, his community, willingly. This Jesse Fell founded the first public university beyond the Appalachians. He founded orphanages and towns. He made money speculating uh, land, but gave it all back, built parks, uh, published the local newspaper, and he was Abraham Lincoln's sponsor. He is recorded by Adlai Wan in the Black Book, who saw it, witnessed it, uh, proposing the uh, proposing to uh, uh, Senator Douglas the joint discussions with Abraham Lincoln of essentially one subject: slavery in the territories. The debates followed seven of them, three hours each. People poured into their politics on foot and by wagon. But those debates also, as Jesse intended, brought uh, uh, Lincoln to the nation's attention. They also shaped our future. Um, and then he got uh, Lincoln to give him his autobiographical sketch, which is in the Black Book, which he used to publicize him. And then he organized the, he was charged, the Secretary of the Republican Party of Illinois with organizing his delegation to the National Convention, which nominated uh, Abraham Lincoln for president. Jesse Fell asked nothing, um, received nothing, and is more or less forgotten. But without him, there might never have been an Abraham, uh, a president Abraham Lincoln. Um, Adlai Wan uh, was a country a prosecutor, lawyer. We were mostly lawyers. Uh, he served uh, one term in Congress, and then, in, uh, then he became a first assistant postmaster general of in Grover Cleveland's first administration. 
where he distinguished himself by firing 40,000 Republican postmasters and replacing them with good Democrats. And for that public service, he was rewarded by his grateful party with its nomination for vice president of the United States. And he was elected with Grover Cleveland in 1892. Um, he was not close to uh, uh, Cleveland, as far as I can tell. He had a staff of, one, of two, one of whom was his uh, son. I don't, didn't seem to have many duties. But he was a wonderfully colorful, a great speaker, left behind a marvelous book. Apparently, he was just loved by everybody, a real gentleman. And uh, was nominated to, uh, to run uh, for vice president with uh, William, William Jennings Bryan. I think as part of ticket balancing, he was more, uh, more the, the uh, Cleveland conservative than, than Bryan, the free silver right. Uh, um, and, and, at, and in old age, at, in 1914, he, uh, uh, he ran for governor and was defeated in a Republican landslide. His son, Stephen, is the weak link, or Lewis, uh, his son Lewis, is the weak link. He was Secretary of State of Illinois, and uh, uh, he, Lewis, married a granddaughter of Jesse Fell. That's how. That's the family connection. That's how it, yeah, comes. Um, comes together. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Lewis is, didn't have good health. His his uh, health was abbreviated. And my father, uh, as he says, uh, uh, was born with a hereditary, incurable case of politics. <laughs> but he was he was a real student of the world. Uh, um, forever uh, in its markets and its mount monuments. He, he was really, I think, the world's favorite American, so much so that Eisenhower had to make him an ambassador of the United States. And in his campaigns, he said, you know, campaigns are not for winning. Democracy is not for winning. Democracy is a system for informing people so they can make the sound judgment. And in those campaigns, hour, half hour long speeches, he uh, laid out his program, which became the program of the New Deal and the, of, the, of, the, of the New Frontier and the Great Society. And he began the uh, strategic arms limitations process. Eisenhower promised change, but it was <laughs> the defeated Stevenson who really delivered it. And he died uh, while serving back at the United Nations as ambassador uh, U.S. ambassador in London, just 20 blocks, just a few blocks from where we had lived 20 years earlier hmm. when he was uh, the U.S. delegate to the Preparatory Commission for the United Nations and great men from all over assembled at our home at night. I was flying on the wall listening to these great men rebuild Europe and a new world order that would end world uh, war for all time. Well, uh, we're, we're at the end. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> oh. <laughs>